mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today we are going to have fun with the, uh, with the idiot of the village, Mina Hijab. You see, one of the things you notice about people who they are claiming to be believers, uh, when they are uh, weak, they compromise. And they compromise because simply they are really not a true believers. Uh, one of you he posted saying that Mimi Hijab he have an interview with the BBC and I don't find this interview in, in the BBC actually where is the BBC I don't see it uh, what I see there's two guys sitting in the chair and we don't see this video in the BBC website so maybe the BBC they decide to make an interview about tits and uh, breastfeeding for adult and they said to themselves let us do it and then they find out that this guy should not be there because the only place I see this title or this video is Mimi Hijab page. And there is no introduction saying this is the BBC. I mean, I never heard of a BBC like this. Maybe this is a BBC for cartoon, maybe. But what make it more cartoonish is the start. It's the Hijab 10 discount code for 10% discount on a wide range of products, including premium Ethiopian black seed products. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> the BBC interview. <laughs> you know, it's really funny that the BBC interview start with something Muhammad he said, the stupid Muhammad he said that the Negla seed is the one have a cure for all diseases. Now, Mimi Hijabi made a video, but it doesn't, if we translate it in literally, yes, it's mean that, but the Prophet did not mean. See, the Muslims, they can go inside the Prophet, they go in his belly, they know what he have in his head. And literally, it's mean that, but if you go, <laughs> and this guy is making living from the, from the seed, which <laughs> help nobody. <laughs> anyway, and then the guy, he asked him a question. What was the question? Good. Okay, we're good. Go ahead, uh, Anton. Um, so, did you grow up in London? And also, I mean, what level of religious would you say that you are? Well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm an observant Orthodox traditionalist Muslim. He is an Orthodox traditional Muslim. I mean, I never saw an Orthodox traditional Muslim wearing T-shirts made and jeans made in China. I never saw an Orthodox he don't start his conversation saying, Insha'Allah. I mean, is it your prophet? He forbid you from starting. How many times I need to teach you Abdul Potato? That it is, if you are a Muslim, you have to say, Insha'Allah. The guy asks you a question, you say, Insha'Allah will answer you. This is what Orthodox Muslims they do. But you are a potato. Hey, hold on. What I see there, I just noticed something. Hold on, let me, let me move the video here. Is that for real, Mr. Orthodox 
Muslim. Look, 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 look. Let us go here. Oh, okay, stop here. Orthodox Muslim, he wear a jeans, is going to touch underneath of his, will touch his shoes. Is it your prophet said, Mr. Orthodox Muslim, that the one who do such a thing, whatever doing, whatever under that point is going to be in hell, which means your feet in hellfire? This potato is an Orthodox Muslim. If you go and watch videos of Zakir Naik, let's type in YouTube Zakir Naik. Let us go to Zakura. Hey Zakura, how are you doing? You will find Zakir supposedly trying to be an Orthodox Muslim. How? You will see that always he wear short trouser. Short trouser. He never wear long trouser. Many of you maybe do not know why. You know, like why, why, why in the world this guy is wearing short trouser? There is a reason. Let us open yeah. any video of Zakir Naik, and we will try to find a shot from far distance. Uh, like, which means a shot where we can see his trouser. I just noticed this, by the way. I mean, this guy is Orthodox Muslim. Okay, let us see here this video. Well, this one is not clear. Let's see a different video. This is why always, you know, a, a Muslim, Orthodox Muslim, they look like Charlie Chaplin. They always have to wear short dress. Short dress. You know what? Let me see. Uh, let us start here. <laughs> Orthodox Muslim, you are right. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, uh, revealing clothes at home, front of the family. I'm just looking for a video to show you. Islamic dress code. Islamic dress code. Here we go. I found Zuku. Is going to explain to us. Here we go. Look at like a Zuku. We found Zuku here. Hey Zuku, how are you doing, Zuku? Zuku, uh, tell tell me my hijab how to dress. Is wearing a trouser above the ankles for uh, far far or sunnah? Look at the topic, brother. Look at the topic. Hey. Zuku, Zukzuka, give Muhammad hijab a bazooka. Question that we have that's come on the WhatsApp as a message is by Abdul Malik from Nigeria. Hey, Abdul Malik. Is wearing trouser above the ankle compulsory or a sunnah? A similar question is asked by Abdul Rahman, Kabul, Afghanistan. Is it allowed? Look, the nation are united. I want one question. The same question. Everybody is worried about wearing the trouser and the trouser touching your shoes. Look at that. Look at the topic. Allah, He knows everything. He talk about everything. So now let us see what is the problem with those trousers. Give him a bazooka. To wear clothes lower than one's ankle. As far as the question is concerned, that is wearing your trouser above the ankle is it a sunnah or is it compulsory or is wearing the trouser below the ankle is it haram or is it makro as far as this guy is you know you feel like he is i mean if zakir naik when he want to answer he do this what he would do when you go into the bathroom as far as what the, can i go to the question man whether wearing the trouser below the ankle is haram or whether it is makru. You did repeat already that. Why are you repeating again? He's trying to gather his thought, like, you know, I mean, you just said that already. Are you Joe Biden? The scholars are divided. What the heck? The scholars are divided? <laughs> about, about what? 
<laughs> there are some scholars who say that wearing the trousers below the ankle is makru. That means wearing the trousers above the ankle is sunnah. While the other scholars say that wearing the trousers below the ankle it is haram. It's haram. So either way, Mimi Hijab is not an Orthodox Muslim. Because if it's makru, which means it's hate, hate, it's hated to do, something hateful to do. And if the other opinion, and by the way, Abdul, what's wrong with you? Isn't your prophet, he says, don't do that. What's wrong with those Abduls? What maybe is, they are divided. Some they say this, some they say that. No, they are not divided. Here we go. This is your prophet. Where is your prophet? Well, hold on. Let us go and find your prophet saying the hadith. Let me find it. Give me a, give me a second. So well, Mimi Hijab is not uh, orth, uh, orthodox. You know, he, he's, he's wearing uh, uh, against the code of Allah. Here we go. This is this is uh, the divided. The hadith is so clear. The hadith is so clear. Muhammad he says the one whoever his clothing is touching his his uh, uh, down his foot or his ankles, he is whatever down that is going to be in hell, which means your feet will be in hell. So Mimi, who claimed to be an Orthodox Muslim, he never wear a short a trouser or a dress because he don't want to look like Charlie Chaplin. And yet this coward claiming that he is an Orthodox. And Abdul, as long as you are an Orthodox Muslim, do you pay tax to Her Majesty the Queen government? Are you allowed? Actually, according to your prophet, you are not even allowed to take the Quran with you to the United Kingdom. It is haram. So the coward, when he say, I am an Orthodox observer Muslim, he is a liar and he is compromising. Even the Quran forbid the Muslims from taking Christians and Jews as a friends and as a protectors, as we see in chapter 5, verse 51. So since when you are an Orthodox Muslim, Is that your Quran? Oh, this is the joke. The yellow pages of uh, Borat. The one you did interview with him. This is your Quran saying, you cannot take a Christians and Jews as friends. When you go to court in, 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 in UK, what do you, you have your own Sharia court? Or you go to the court of Her Majesty the Queen, the Queen of England, the believers will not take the non-believers as awliya min dun al mu'minin. Did you call the guy in the interview my friend? Hmm? Coward? This is a true believer. He will not. No matter what. But you are not a true believer. If we go to different verse, Chapter 5, verse 51. It says clearly the same, but in more details. That a Muslim, he cannot take a Christians and Jews specifically as a friends or protectors. Who is your protector in England? Who is your court system? Do you practice Sharia law in England? No. So you are not an orthodox muslim you are a potato you are a coward you are a muta boy you don't even dare to marry second wife in uk you don't dare go do it the uk is announcing hamas as a terrorist organization you don't dare to say i'm going to support hamas show us that you are an orthodox muslim so the potato he continue as you see he is not wearing a clothes as a muslim he is wearing his pant going down covering his his boot which his prophet says that the one who do that he is going to end in hellfire and then the funny things about this interview he said you know we will not play it all we, we, we enough the start is enough he said we are not anti-semitism we are anti-zionist if we examine that we will find that this person is a big fat liar because here we go the verse in the front of us says take not christian and jews as a friends Okay, if you are anti-Zionism, why you are you why you cannot take the Jews as a friend? If you are just anti-Zionist, not every Jew is a Zionist. If you are talking about the political, you know, like movement, 
of Zionism. But the Quran forbid you from taking the Christian and the Jews as a friend. So what they are, they are enemies. So when the coward, he says, we are not against the Jews. And not only that, he says, we have the same God. Abdul Betato, Muta boy, Tits boy. Your Quran, your stupid Quran, chapter 3, verse number 67, it says that Abraham was not a Jew, neither a Christian, but he was a Muslim Hanif. So if Abraham was not a Jew, wasn't a Christian, that means the Quran have a different Abraham from the Abraham of the Jews or the Christians. Because this Abraham was a Hanif and he was a Muslim. He was not a Jew. And here you see how stupid the one who made the Quran. Because how Abraham can be a Jew if he is the father of the Jews? However, the stupidity of Muhammad go farther. In different verse in the Quran, he says, Or say you that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob, and Asbat, which means the 12 sons of Jacob, were Jews or Christians. So how do you say that <laughs> your Quran saying, look at, the, look at the stupid God of Muhammad. This guy, he's saying we have the same God. Look, you see, here you see how a whore tried to attach herself to somebody who have honor. Why Muslims who they are claiming to be proud about their God try to attach their God to the asses of the Jews because their God have no honor. But look what their God saying, showing us that he is a stupid. This is not God. This is a stupid Muhammad making a stupid statement. According to Muhammad, Jacob is not a Jew. But isn't it the Bible, the Old Testament saying that Jacob is the firstborn of Israel? And the Lord, he says, this is my firstborn, speaking about Israel. Isn't it the 12 sons of Jacob, they are the tribes of Israel, Abdul, Potato? According to your stupid God, Jacob, Isaac, his children, none of them is a Jew. So what kind of a stupid God you have and how that can be the same God of Abraham? Is that what the God of Abraham teach? Not to forget to mention, the God of Abraham did not teach you that you can have sex with the children like your prophet and to kiss a black stone in the shape of a vagina. And the God of Abraham did not teach you that if you touch stones, it's going to erase your sin. And the God of Abraham did not teach you to attack the neighbors so you can get the blonde girls. And the God of Abraham did not say, oh, I am Muhammad, my prophet. Go and attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. And the God of Abraham did not say to you that you can go and flirt with the wife of your own son so you can have sex with her. And the God of Abraham did not say to you that you can go to your neighbor and you can cheat on him and you can cheat with his wife and the God did not say to you and the God of Abraham that any woman she want to if give herself to the prophet so he can if her that is not the God of Abraham and not to forget to mention the God of Abraham never mentioned that in heaven we have vaginas to if so when you make Muslims, you make a claim that we have the same God. How come we don't have the same heaven? Can you show me where in the Old Testament it says that God will give us a lot of vagina to effort? Can you show me in the Old Testament where God, he promised us a woman with big boobs? When your prophet, he says in the heaven, you will have sex and he explained saying dahman dahman which mean a violent sex look how perverted sick he is did the god of abraham promise us boys who will not bleed in heaven and not to forget to mention the coward when he says that we have the same god the god of abraham is a spirit and this is mentioned in many places in the old testament and in the new testament is your god is a spirit the Muslim, they will say no. So even the nature of your God is not the same as the nature of our God. Not to forget to mention that your God is a perverted hooker. Because only hookers and pimps, they promise nothing but sex. Come to my bar, I have food and I have vagina. When there is a God, you claim that he is the God of Abraham and he promised you endless penis. That means you are an endless liar. So when you say that you are a person who claim to be that we are not against the Jews, we are not against, we are not anti-Semitic, we are anti-Zionist. Uh, Let me get you busted in two seconds, son of Muta. Isn't it your prophet, he says, that you have to kill every single Jew? So why you want to kill them all? 
Is that anti-Semitic or this is anti-Zionism? Do you see how easy we can get them busted? This is Sahih al-Bukhari. They cannot deny it. They cannot say it's weak. They cannot say it's fat. They cannot say it's the penis of this the one who said it is short. Allah Messenger said the hour will not establish. Until you fight the Jews, not some of the Jews, the Jews. And the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, hey Muslim, there is a hiding Jew behind me, come and kill him. So is that an anti-Semitic or this is anti-Zionism? Tits boy. Do you see how we expose them so easy? Because if you are against the Zionist, then your God should say to you, oh, fight the Zionist. Your God is saying, kill every Jew. Every single Jew. And even if a Jew hide behind a tree or a rock, even the tree and the rock will help you against the Jews. Tits, boy. May Allah bless your tits, which you showed to the Chinese. Hey, by the way, your Billy Bomb was showing in the video, and this is haram according to your prophet. You will end in hellfire. You are just a hooker. And now let us go and see what the Quran says about hating the Jews. Is it your stupid Quran says that the Jews are your enemy until the day of judgment? So how come you are saying you are not anti-Semitic, you are anti-Zionism? If we go to the stupid Quran, we will find the following. Read and laugh at the stupid Abdul. Chapter 5, verse number 82. You will find the strongest among, in, in, among the men, among all the men, all the mankind, in enmity to the believers, to the Muslims, is those who call themselves Jews. The coward, he says, we are not anti-Semitic. Is that a statement against every Jew or not? And this is, will be until the judgment day. And not only that, the filthy Allah, he is anti-Jew, anti-Christians, but he hates Jews specifically. To the point he said that we are going to spread hatred and enmity until the day of judgment. Chapter 5, verse number 64. The Jews, they said, you said that the Muslims and the Jews, they have the same God. So why are the Jews making fun of Allah? If the Jews, they believe in the same God. People, do you see it? The Jews in this verse is making fun of Allah specifically, saying that this God, his hand is tied up. He cannot give Muhammad miracles. He is a false God. And yet the Abdul, they compromise their cult and they attach their hooker God to the God of the Jews because their God is a hooker and she have no honor. So let us try to buy her honor. Those are the Jews in your book making fun of Allah, saying, hey, the God of Islam, the God of Muhammad, his hand is tied up. <laughs> he can't give anything. The answer was as the following. Allah cursed them by their hands tied up and they are cursed what they uttered. Nay, both his hand is widely outstretching. Hey, Abdul, when David would he asked you, your God, Allah have hands, you said, who said so? You are just a hooker. Laughable, playable, enjoyable with pimps. Do you see that both his hands? And by the way, there's a video made by Fifi, your sister, saying, debating a Muslim sheikh, he says, the Quran say Allah have two hands. You cannot accuse us to be, to be kuffar. This is what Allah, he said, what we say. But according to the hooker Mimi Hijab, that Allah have no body part. But the important for us here, as you see, the Jews, they are making fun of Allah. So how they worship Allah then? How we Christian worship Allah and we are spitting at Allah. 
those people they have no honor they are trying to find an honorable people like us to attach their God to, to us you will not find a Christian saying oh you know we have the same God or God have a son is your God have a son no even your stupid Quran says the Jews they worship a person his name he is the son of Allah his name is Uzair potato do you have the same God and then you will find the Abdul saying to you you know uh, this is one of the Jew you stupid Abdul it says the Jews did you, did you Allah he used the wrong words he says the Jews and the Christian he did say some of the Christian he did not say some of the Jews potato like your prophet potato like your God so when the Quran says we are going to make your enemy to the Jews and we will spread hatred between you and the Jews until the day of judgment. Why you are saying we are against Zionism, coward? If the God of Abraham had the same God of the Jews and the, your God, so why your God saying Abraham was not a Jew, was neither a Christian? What does that mean? Which is a very stupid statement. But why is not stupid? I mean, this is Muhammad. He say all the stupid things. And then he say it here, and we spread hatred among them. Among who? The Jews. And we have put enmity and hatred among them till the day of resurrection. And this coward he is saying that we are not anti-Jews or anti-Semitism. We are anti-Zionism. But his Quran saying something else. You know why Mimi Hijab saying that? Because he is a hooker who have no honor. A true believer, he will say, yes, this is my book and this is what it says. A true believer will not deny what is in the book. Does it say until the day of judgment? Does it say the Jews? Does it say Zionist? And mentioning the word Zionist, by the way, huh? isn't it your God, your potato himself is a Zionist? Is it your God is the one who gave the Jews the land and he says, Oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned to you? Hooker? Oh, my people. Who is saying that? Allah told Musa supposedly. I remember when Musa said to his people, Oh, my people. Okay. Oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned it to you. Your God, Allah, is a Zionist because he is the one who assigned the land to the Jews. But at that time, Muhammad was a hooker like you, trying to compromise with the Jews, trying to make them happy to accept him. Muhammad in the hadith, he said, if only 10 Jews accepted me, the whole Jews will accept me, which means the stupid Muhammad, he was a hooker in the eyes of every Jew in the time of Muhammad, to the point he was not able to make 10 Jews accept him. Oh, my people, on, enter the Holy Land. And not only that, never turn your back. Go attack it, kill the Palestinian, and never come back. Was he a Zionist? Your God is a Zionist. Your God not only is giving them the land which you claim that this is the land of the Palestinian. He is assigning the land only to them from all mankind. Isn't it your, call, your God, he says to the Jews, remember my favor upon you? <laughs> that I favor you from upon all mankind? Allah is a Zionist. He favored the Jews above all mankind. And look how many verses in the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 47. Chapter 2, verse 122. Chapter 6, verse number 86. Uh, actually, here, this is not about the Jews, sorry. And uh, yeah, chapter 45, verse number 16. So let us start with the first one. Who is the one who favored the Jews above all mankind? Allah do you see it so if you are saying the Zionist is people they believe that the people of Zion they are favored by God and they have a privilege this is what your God he just said your God is a Zionist 
he is confirming in his stupid book that the top notch people who've been favored by God is the Jews. And the funny is, he is using the word al alamin, which means al alamin or alamin, which means the mankind and the genie. The, even Allah, He favored them upon the genie. I mean, what is that? What is that? He favored them upon all human and even genie, brother. I mean, look how Zionist he is. See, the Zionists they say that God He favored them, uh, favor us upon angels or or genie. They say <laughs> we are chosen people of God, right? But the Quran says that, and the Quran make it even wider that the Jews are being favored. They are chosen people. Not only that, He even favored them upon all mankind and even the genie. So who is the Zionist? You cannot find a stupid fool more than Muhammad the Abdul. Can you? Hypocrite coward. And you know the funny is, the stupid Quran keeps saying, Oh, children of Israel. But in other verses it says, Is Jacob and Isaac and the twelve tribe are Jews? But the stupid God, he called those people the children of Israel in every place, and he called them even Jews. Oh, children of Israel, remember my favor which I best with you upon you. I prefer you to all mankind. And look what the Muslims they try to fix it. They say, for of your period, period in the past. Where it says that? Where, where it says the past? Here we go. This is the Arabic. They add things to fix it. And hold on. Are you saying to me that your God Allah was a stupid? He did not know the future? So when Allah, he gave the Jews the land of the Palestinian, according to the Quran, in chapter 5, verse number 21. Do Allah, he knew that this land one day will become a land of the Palestinian, the Muslims? And by the way, Palestinians are the Muslims. Those are terrorists. They came with Umar al-Khattab and they are occupation. Do you see how easy to expose those dummies? Look at this guy here, just to show you the dummies. Here we go, another hooker. It's a hooker day, Friday. Look at this hooker statement. The Jews during the time of Muhammad are not the Jews of today. You stupid idiot. He was talking to the Jews in the front of him. He's saying to them, remember my favor. This verse was speaking to the Jew in the time of Muhammad. You're a stupid monkey, not donkey. This verse, Allah saying to the Jews who they are in the front of him, remember my favor, Jews. And as long as the Jews at that time, they are not the same Jews. So why your prophet, he says, okay, bring me the Torah. Let me take an oath in it. Eh? He was in the house of the Jews. And you Muslim, you claim that your prophet, he married Jews after he killed her husband for sure and her family. Bring me the Torah. Bring me the Torah, Jews. And those are not the same Jews. Those are the bad Jews. But your prophet, he said to the bad Jews, as you claim, bring me the Torah. And they brought the Torah for him. And then after they brought the Torah, he put the Torah on the cushion. And then he put his hand on it. And he swears saying, I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee. They are not the same Jews. They are the bad Jews. So the bad Jews, your prophet saying to them, I believe in the Torah with the bad Jews. They are the bad Jews. You just say that. The Jews during the time of Muhammad are not the Jews of today. But those verses says, enter the judgment day. And if the Jews in the time of Muhammad are not the same as the Jews are today, so why your prophet, he's speaking to them until the judgment day, they want to change. Stupid. And you know, if the Jews in the time of Muhammad, they are different, that's mean they are favored in the time of Muhammad. So why he killed them? Donkey. 
Why Allah must spread hatred between the Jews in the time of Muhammad? As long they are different, donkey. So here you see that this cult is a super. Nobody can beat Muhammadan with their lies. I mean, no, there's no other fiction cult can compete. Their prophet, he hate the Jews. He teach violence against the Jews and he make it a duty for every Muslim to kill the Jews until the day of judgment. So if the Jews in the time of Muhammad is different, still it says until the day of judgment, you will kill them. So matter, no matter what kind of Jews we are talking about, this is a very hateful, disgusting cult. Teaching violence and I say, if I am a Jew, I will make a case right now in USA, in Europe, to ban Islamic religion, for Islam is asking to commit genocide against the Jews, specifically. This is a very hateful cult, created by a hooker, her name is Muhammad, and his God does not even exist. This God will not even remember which one he created first, the mountains or the stars. Somebody saying, why CP don't comment about today uh, uh, event? What is today event? Somebody told you I am a news agency? Today event, what is today event, guys? What happened? Joe Biden was coughing? I mean, people, they make comment, we, we laughable. Why CP don't comment about, you know, what, what do I need to comment about everything happening in this earth? What I will comment about. There's an actor, she broke her lipstick. So those cowards, why this guy did not say in the meeting as long he claimed that to be an Orthodox Muslim, which is obviously he's not. Why he did not say, well, the prophet, he ordered us to kill them all. Are you denying this? Are you a person who is not proud about his prophet teaching? Germany incident? What Germany? Somebody, a terrorist attack? You see, I say that European, they deserve what's happening to them. You open your doors for those terrorists and you do not check who they are. You don't even know their names. You give them papers, you give them refugee, and then they go on the street and they kill you. You deserve it. Don't complain. Stop complaining and crying. You brought them, you deserve what happened to you. Honestly, I will never cry for something happened done by the hand of the one who had happened to him. You bring the devil to your house, you bring terrorists. This Joe Biden, he brought 100,000 Afghani. If only, only 50 of them is terrorist, USA is screwed. Nobody knows who they are. Whoever jump in the airplane, they bring them. So I will not cry for stupidity, you know, when, when, when Western government, they are full of stupid leaders, well, stupid leaders will destroy you. The Bible says, my nation been destroyed because of their ignorance. And you vote for those coward, those stupid leaders, then you deserve what will happen to you. And nothing will change as long as you are voting for them and bring them to bring more people to your land. Soon you will be a, a foreigner in your land. Soon you will see there's no French in France, no German in Germany, and no, no, that will happen. If every day tens of thousands come to your land, you do not even know their names. You do not know even where they are coming from. Whoever jump in the boat will bring him. 400,000 in the last two years came only from Tunisia, half million. In 10 years from now, all of Tunisia will be there. So my friend, I don't cry for the stupid ones. Cry, stupid ones deserve what will happen to them. I will not even cry if all of you are destroyed. You deserve it. This is what you cook. Eat from what you cooked. I just saw, uh, uh, I think she is a French. I think she's a French. She is saying, or I don't know, I, I saw it in the news. Uh, she said that accusing Saudi Arabia of supporting terrorism have no base and it's a lie. 
I mean, Saudi Arabia is the terrorist country itself. Is it terrorism to allow man to beat his wife? Is it terrorism that you don't allow women to have their rights? Is it terrorism that a man he can beat his wife just to force her to do what he want? Is it terrorism that you cut the hand of somebody? Is it terrorism that you stone women because she committed adultery according to your religion? A Muslim he will say to you, well, isn't it, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is now. The definition of terrorism is terrifying others not to do something. So, if they are against, in Europe, execution, even for a criminal, how come you go silence on stoning? How come you go silence that the government of Saudi Arabia, they, went this, they, they, they took the guy inside the embassy and they made him shish kebab literally? Isn't this is terrorism? So, what those people, they present is money. The president of France right now, he is, he just left from United Arab Emirates. He sold Emirates 80 Rafale airplane. Based on what? Money. Do they, do they have a freedom of speech there? No. Do they have a human right? No. So why we sell them with money? Now he will go to Saudi Arabia. I think he arrived in Saudi He will do the same. So their friends is the one who have money. They go mute you when you have money, when you pay them. It doesn't matter if you are anti-human right or not. If you don't have money, they will open the gates of hell on you, like what happened to the Assad regime in Syria. If the Assad have money, all of them, they will support him. You don't have money, you are a dictator. As if the king of Jordan is not a dictator, the king of Saudi Arabia is not a dictator, the, 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 the Emirati is not a dictator, the Qatari is not a dictator, the Bahrain is not a dictator. Name for me, Erdogan is not a dictator. Name for me one Islamic leader, one Islamic country, there's a freedom and there's a human right. So those European leaders are a bunch of cowards. They don't count for me. They are just businessmen, everything for sale, including their own land, not only their airplanes. Not only their airplanes. Somebody saying so Muslims should not be enter, allowed to enter uh, to Europe on the US. I am saying that you should not allow anyone believe in terrorism to enter your land, whoever that, even if he's a Christian. Before you let somebody enter, shouldn't you question and see if he is a terrorist first? So when you say to me, I'm Muslim, if I, if I ask you, do the Muslim believe in this statement in front of us, the one you are talking about, he should be allowed. If you say, if he say, I don't believe in it, which means he don't believe in Islam, then he is welcome. But if he believe in killing every Jews, why you want to welcome him? So he can go in the street and shoot the Jews? If he believe in killing the Christians too, chapter, five, chapter 9, verse 20, 20, uh, 29, so when you invite a, a person to come to your country, you have to allow only those who accept the civil law of this country, that we will not go and shoot each other in the street because we are from different religion. So if you have a person, he believes that he should kill anyone just because he is from different religion, he should not be allowed to enter the country. And then if you find me a Muslim, he don't believe that he should kill, then he is more than welcome. But the question is, how we can find a Muslim who don't believe that he should kill the Christian and the Jews when the Quran order him to kill every Christian and every Jew? Until they are humiliated, either they convert or they die. So when a Muslim says, are you saying, are you saying, you coward, are you saying that nobody can have citizenship in Saudi Arabia if you're a Muslim? Why in your country I cannot enter Saudi Arabia to be a citizen in that country, even if I work in Saudi Arabia for 40 years, 50 years? You know why? Because I'm a Christian. They don't believe in human right. They will never give you a right, but they ask for every right from you. Cowards. They come to your land and they ask you to treat them equally. But when we go to their land, they don't treat us even, they don't even treat us like dogs. Hateful teaching cult. Kill the Christians, kill the Jews, the Quran says, chapter 9, verse 29. 
Until what? Because why? Why? What is the crime? What they commit? Because they did not accept Allah and His Messenger. Because they did not follow what is forbidden by Allah. So if you eat pork, we will kill you. If you don't say shahada, we will kill you. And then Abdul, he claimed to be a victim. Are you saying we are not allowed to enter? No, I'm saying every Muslim is welcome to enter if you don't believe in this garbage in front of us. But if you believe in killing the Christian and the Jews, then you should not be allowed to enter. So they should ask the person, are you going to spit at this verse? If he say yes and he spit at it, then he should be more than welcome. Doesn't matter if his name is Muhammad or Ahmed or Ali, that will not change anything. Doesn't matter if he's a Saudi or Iraqi or Syrian, he is welcome. But if he believes in killing the Christian and the Jews, then he should not be allowed. Until now, in Islamic countries, they don't let any Christian to get citizenship. Very hateful cult. Have you ever heard of a country have zero Christians, zero atheists, zero Jews? How that happened? Zero gay? Zero gay? There is a zero gay in Saudi Arabia. Do you know why? <laughs> Do you know why? Somebody saying they lie anyway. My friend, they lie, but the only way to prove it, lie or not, if he did it or not. So, this is the truth. Islam has nothing to do with the Christianity and Judaism. Islam is an anti-human, not only, not only anti-Semitic. Islam is anti-human belief. Islam will destroy your humanity. When the Quran says be to, beat women, that is anti-humanity, regardless if it's a Muslim woman or non-Muslim woman. When the Quran says women, she cannot be a witness in the court unless it's just a, a court of about borrowing money, that is anti-humane. And the excuse that women have half a brain. When the religion teach that the most evil ones is women, that is anti-humane. When Muhammad, he claimed that all the women, they are hookers, because they are the same as Eve. That is anti-humane. And not only that, this guy, he said that Islam is not anti-Semitic when Muhammad, he blamed every bad things in this earth to the Jews. Read carefully. This is his filthy hooker prophet saying, the prophet said, Where it is not of Bani Israel, meat would not decay. Is that anti-Semitic? Bani Israel. He did not say this is the, the Zionist. This filthy Muhammad, he claimed that anything ugly, bad, even the rotten, the rotten food, the cause behind it is the Jews. Do you see it? Is that anti-Semitic or this is anti-Zionist? Do you see it? And where it's not for Eve, no woman would betray her husband. Do you see it? So Muhammad, he claimed to for every evil in this earth. Number one, the Jews, they are behind every evil according to Muhammad. Number two is the women. This is anti-humane cult. So when they say to you that we are anti-Zionist, we are not anti-Jews, they are lying. It is very well known. Anti-Semitic, anti-Jews, and they are seeking the killing of every single Jew and every single Christian too. That's why in the Middle East, Hamas, they say, Saturday first, Sunday second. Why? Which means we kill the Jews first and then we kill the Christians. Quran is a hate speech. Islam is a hate speech. Islam should be banned from all countries who respect themselves. Your government, they are compromising just because they need the business. They have a business. 
some they need oil some they need gas and some they need terrorists the first terrorist is Muhammad is it Muhammad who says I've been victorious by terror is it Muhammad he says I installed terror in the heart of disbelievers from a distance of one month journey I was victorious by terror Muhammad said I was helped by what by terror Muhammad himself says I was helped by terror and then we will find many filthy coward Western government leaders claiming that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism when Muhammad is the first one who was victorious by terror Muhammad says I was victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey I terrify my enemies look how nice he is he is not just a terrorist he terrify people from a distance of one month journey So my friends, how many times we said we as a Christians, we love Muslims, we do love Muslims, but we will not love the evil of Islam. We love Muslims to live between us, to be our friends, to be our neighbors, to be good to each other, which means we need a neighbor who is a human, who is back to his humanity. Muhammad, he take humanity from you. So when I say we love Muslims, that is us as a Christians. But the question is, do Muslims love us? The problem is the Quran forbidding them. The Quran even saying that you cannot even love your own parents if they are not Muslims. Even your own sons, your mother, your brother, your sister, the Quran says, you will not find one Muslim. You will read carefully. This is the chapter 58, verse number 22. You will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day, making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger. Even if they are their fathers, even if they are their brothers, even if they are their children, so the problem is not me and the, um, a Muslim neighbor. The problem is Muhammad, the faith of Muhammad. If we are able to convince the Muslims not to believe in such a garbage, then we and Muslim, we can live in peace. He can call himself Muslim, who cares? He can kiss stones, who cares? He can, he can worship stones, none of my business. But we should fight against hatred. In order to establish a peaceful life between all mankind, including the Muslims. Muslims are people like us. They have family, they have children, they have feeding. So one of them die, they cry, like everybody. So why would they kill each other? The problem is the filthy Muhammad in his book. And Muhammad, he wanted to be sure that he will not let his people after him be friends to the Jews and the Christians. So he made it clear, you will not find any Muslim. not even one he will be kind and good and loving to his even family you see here it says who believe in Allah be friendship this is a false translation it says let you are doing you are doing mean lovable nice kind change the translator you have a new Quran this is how funny Islam is and this is how corrupt this religion is you change only the translator, you will find in your Quran, new meaning. You will not find any people who believe in Allah in the last days loving those who resist Allah and His Messenger. So if your neighbor is a Hindu, he don't believe Allah, he don't want to believe in Allah, he's resisting, you cannot love him. Do you see it? And what next? We do jihad, we kill them. So they make speeches about love, but they are fake and they are fraud here we give you evidence we give you reference everything you see is in the screen made by them 
written by them, translated by them, posted by them. I just read it for you. So yes, Islam is anti-humane, not only anti-Semitic. Islam is anti-anyone is not a Muslim. And the proof in front of your eyes. If a Muslim, he cannot be loving to even his parents if they aren't Muslims. So he can be loving to nobody unless they are Muslims. That means Islam teach that Muslims, they can only love each other and they have to hate everyone else. Are we providing proofs and reference? So if we are people who stand for, uh, you know, let's say, uh, living together, harmony, uh, peace, then we should ban Islam. Not Muslims. Muslims are victims of this garbage. We should ban Islam. The problem is Islam, not the Muslims. If there is no Islam, there is no Muslims. If nobody believes in this garbage, then the Muslims are wonderful people. Why not? So for me, I don't want Muslim to be banned. I want Islam to be banned. For the problem is this garbage in front of us. The problem is not a human being. His name is Muhammad. He lived next door. The problem is what is written in this book. This book should be banned. This is the book of hate. And this book should be replaced by a book teaching love. Teaching that we should live in peace and harmony. Teaching that if your neighbor, his name is Muhammad, or my neighbor, her name is Aisha, and she is old and honest to God. If I have a neighbor, she is an old woman, she, I will cut her grass. She's a Muslim or not, who okay. cares? When I was in Germany, last time I went to Germany, the rain was going so crazy. There's a woman, she left her, her, her seat to go and read something in the, in, the, in the announcement. And then when she came back, her seat is gone. And the rain is coming like crazy, so she ended the rain. And she's an old woman. I gave her my chair. And I can tell easy that she is a Muslim woman. Because this is how a Christian should be. Christian person is not somebody he hates Muslims. Christian person is somebody who helped everybody, even if he is a Muslim. Jesus said, even love your enemy. So even if they think you are enemies, for me, I'm not going to take you as an enemy. I want to take you as a friend. You hate me, I don't want to hate you. For Jesus, he made a better person of me. Muhammad, he made you evil. So you want to live good? Stay away from Muhammad. You want to live good? Stay away from hate, for hate a poison will kill you before it kill anyone else. So this coward, when he speak about we are not anti-Semitic, he is lying because his prophet confirmed that Muslims, they have to kill every single Jew. It is not a choice. Muhammad, he confirmed that all evil in this earth is because of the Jews. It is not a choice, as you see. And this is the reference. This is Sahih Bukhari. They can say this is weak. Every Jew is a target in this religion. And this will be the case until the day of judgment. And this is not only for the Jews, by the way. If you think you are saved, you are mistaken. If you are a Jew, if you are a Hindu, if you are a Buddha, if you are an atheist, if you are a gay, if you are a lesbian, if you are a Christian, doesn't matter who you are. Islam is anti-humane. Anyone, he is not a Muslim. Islam is anti the person who is not a Muslim. As simple as that. And not only that, even if you are a Muslim, you don't agree with their sect, still they have to kill you. Even the Quran says that if there is two a part of the of the Muslims, they don't agree with each other. Fight the one which is unjust, and who is the unjust? Each one of them now accuse the other one to be unjust. So the Shia they want to kill the Sunni. The Sunni they want to kill the, the, the Shia. Uh, ISIS want to kill Al Qaeda. Qaeda uh, accusing ISIS to be kuffar. I mean, every single Islamic sect want to kill the other sect. So not only will this, this is the religion spread hatred between. Muslims and non-Muslims, even between Muslims. Muslims cannot find peace between their own. 
Muhammad himself, he said, my nation will be 73 sect. His nation is already 73,000 sects. Sect, 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 actually. It's six, not sect. <laughs> 73 sect only, are you sure, Abdul? <laughs> Uh, so the truth is in front of you is that sound like anti-Zionism or this is anti-Semitic leave your comment and tell me what do you think Jesus on the cross he said to the Jews and he spoke to the father saying forgive them father they do not know what they are doing he did not say go after them and kill them and he was in the cross, remember? This is not a statement of somebody who was walking in the street, making a speech. Talk is cheap, right? He was in the cross. He have nails in his hands. He have nails in his feet. He's dying, literally. And he said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. Why Muhammad don't have the same statement? Especially he is the one who attacked them. The Jews, they took Muhammad. The Jews, they took Muhammad as a refugee. Learn from that. Muhammad and his men, they came as refugee and then they took over the city and they killed everyone inside the city. This is the refugee, Muhammad. They brought the devil to their house. They didn't know what they did. They gave the devil a shelter and then they paid the price. anti-semitism I mean who my friend who care about that the pronunciation I'm not here to teach you English and you are not here to teach me English as long you know what I am I am saying what I mean then the purpose is is good uh, you are not here to learn from me English you are here to learn from me more information you do not know yourself uh, uh, do you care about men was arrested in Pakistan? I mean, don't you see? I mean, this guy Ali Dawa, the friend of Mimi Hijab, he threatened a prophet prophet to be killed. Live on the and on, on YouTube. Anyone arrest him? Nobody. Did they ban his channel? No. Atheists they support them. You know those those liberals they support terrorism. UK UK government is a is a terrorist government because this is the nest of terrorism. All terrorists who they are wanted in their Islamic countries, they are welcome in UK. This is the truth. All those names, Abu Qutada, Abu Fudada, Abu Judada, all the Abu, they are wanted for execution in their countries, which means in their Islamic country they are terrorists. In UK they are a normal citizen. For UK is the most evil government ever, you can imagine. UK is the nest of terrorists. And the Queen of England is the Queen of Terrorists. And this is the fact. And I changed anyone to say to me it's not true. A Sri Lankan sport manager. Why in the world anyone want to go to work in Pakistan, my friend? I mean, from all the world, you could not find a place to go to accept Islamic countries. Even Muslims, they run away from Islamic countries. You know, sometimes people, they make stupid mistakes, the mistake of their life. Never go to work in Saudi Arabia. Never go to work in Qatar. Never go to work in Emirates because you can disappear any second. Those people don't respect the human rights. This is Islamic countries. This is a country where the crimes is good and cutting hands is mercy so why you go there you go there and then you cry for what they do to you don't go there live in Sri Lanka and die in Sri Lanka same as all the millions who they are born in Sri Lanka why you want to go there 
what you expect is that exactly is the few dollars more you will make is going to make you rich is it going to make you have a better life you will be humiliated you will be treated as a dog and go and see how they discriminate people go and see in Qatar now they are building for the Olympic or they are building for the the, the football uh, uh, coming uh, uh, competition you would go and see how many Indian they die go and see how they put them in boxes not in houses go and see how they put them in shelves in the top of each other go and see why they have no air condition they treat them even dogs they have better life but if you are an American work in Qatar you will have a car you will have an apartment you will have a big salary you will have health insurance you will have a full year vacation you have all everything you can imagine but if you are an Indian if you are from Sri Lanka if you are from Indonesia if you are from any poor country they will step on you they will spit on you and even you will not be able to be buried in that land just because you are poor this is Islamic countries and I change anyone to say to me I'm lying 60 70 Indian they put them in one room in the top of each other American he live in a villa this is the truth and the truth hurt The truth hurt. And by the way, this is not the fault of those filthy countries. It's the fault of the stupid government of those poor countries to let their citizens go and work in Saudi Arabia. Like every year, you will see that the Filipino government complain about girls kidnapped or raped in Saudi Arabia. So why you send them? Why you allow them to go there? In certain point, the Indonesian government they stop allowing any women to work as maid in Saudi Arabia. Do you know why? One thousand two hundred Indonesian women disappear. After one thousand two hundred, now you decide to stop sending maids. Isn't it enough 50? Isn't it enough 100? Isn't it enough 200? Isn't it enough 600? Isn't it enough 1,000? 1,200. Why? Because obviously there's no value. Your government doesn't, doesn't value you. You have a very filthy government too. Imagine if the American they lost two citizens in Saudi Arabia. What will happen? Not 2,000 citizens. So I hope we expose this hooker who she claimed to be Orthodox Muslim. She is nothing but a hooker. She is a tit boy. She's a liar. She wear long trousers. She never say inshallah. She is not Orthodox because if she is Orthodox, she should practice the muta. She should have many wives, not one. She should not accept any law which is not Islamic law. This is what Orthodox Muslim is. All of them, they are liars and they are fraud. I want to say thank you for being here. I hope you have a good time together. I'm not going to stay longer. We have yesterday almost nine hours of life. So we wanted to refute this Abdul. So remember one thing, we don't have the same God. Their God is not a spirit. Our God is a spirit. Their God is filthy. Our God is not. Our God have a son. Their God does not. Their God is a pimp. He have a lot of vaginas and penises in his heaven. Our God does not. So when they say we have the same God, that because of their weakness, that's because they are looking for any reason to be legitimate. That's mean they are admitting in their heart that we are the only legitimate people. That we are the true believers. Even their stupid book call us the people of the book. Muslims never been called in their own book the people of the book. You know why? Because they never had one. Until now, we are called the people of the book. It's an admission. It's a confirmation that the God of Islam could not deny that we are the people of the book. So then who are you? Thank you all. May the Lord bless you. Love the Muslim, don't hate them, but don't love hatred. The only hate we are allowed to have is to hate hatred. Thank you. God bless. Christ is Lord. And Islam is a scam, and we prove it every day. Take care.
But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 